This is Jeff Weiss with Unit 7 of HRT 211, which will cover topics related to propagation from seeds. So for this week, um, we have readings from the textbook, uh, this lecture, and a number of videos have been posted including how to make a YouTube video. Uh, this uh, video was prepared by uh, a former student and he gave me permission to uh, share it with you so that you can uh, uh, get some help in making your own uh, presentation before the end of the term. Uh, there's a uh, discussion board question relating to dormancy barriers and you'll be asked to describe uh, dormancy for a plant species that you select and this week your uh, project outline or draft if you've gotten that far uh, is due for review and comments. Some key terms have to do with uh, seed development and especially the topic of germination and breaking dormancy and uh, also um, with various uh, methods of seed propagation and uh, steps to take to uh, promote healthy seedlings and uh, success in propagation from seeds. Various uh, Learning objectives for this week include uh, conditions necessary for and stages of germination, uh, dormancy barriers and how to break them, uh, different seed propagation methods and techniques, uh, care for seedlings, and uh, identifying and addressing issues that can promote or hinder the success of transplants. So in order for seeds to germinate, three conditions must be met. First of all, the embryo has to be alive and capable of germination. Uh, in other words, it needs to be viable. And we've talked in prior lessons and in our lab about various tests for seed viability. Secondly, appropriate environmental conditions uh, must exist and um, in order to uh, help the and enable the seed to overcome its dormancy and finally uh, the third the seed does need to uh, complete uh, the process of breaking dormancy. There's three stages in germination. Uh, first is the imbibition or rapid uptake of water into the seed and that uh, step triggers a frenzy of metabolic activity that um, takes place inside the seed uh, that uh, results in uh, rapid cell division in the embryo, uh, changes uh, in the uh, food storage um, areas of the seed, and finally uh, begin the, uh, the visible uh, germination of the seed, which is usually the protrusion of the radical from the seed and the radical is the part that uh, uh, will form the um, the root of the of the plant uh, and there's two types of uh, two common types of uh, germination epigeal where the uh, radical pushes the uh, embryo uh, uh, and what's left of the seed coat above the soil surface and hypogeal uh, germination uh, which uh, results in the epicotyl extending from the um, from the seed and pushes the uh, plumule and the uh, uh, cotyledons above the soil surface while the seed coat remains underground. The environmental conditions that must be met for the seed to germinate consist of a variety of, of uh, items. Uh, some of the most important are temperature uh, and uh, for most seed germination purposes it's better uh, that the temperature is consistent. Uh, quick changes in temperature um, can be very um, 
tough on new seedlings, especially uh, once uh, uh, spring weather has warmed the soil and a quick cold snap comes through and um, results in, in freezing. Uh, secondly, uh, rainfall, um, predictable patterns, particularly, uh, preferably without uh, uh, extended rainy seasons that might uh, uh, inundate and result in uh, fungal infections to uh, the uh, seeds are preferable. Um, wind is an issue in that uh, strong winds can uh, uh, desiccate the soil and uh, uh, kill the seeds while they're in the process of germination and light. We'll talk a little bit more about this, but uh, uh, light works both ways. Some seeds uh, need exposure to sunlight in order to germinate, and some uh, crops, especially forestry crops, need shade in order to uh, uh, germinate and grow. And finally, uh, uh, pollution, which could be uh, pollution from the air or even pollution in the soil, um, uh, could have a uh, an adverse effect on uh, germinating seedlings. So um, the um, U.S. government has some extremely valuable uh, resources uh, that they offer, um, precipitation maps, uh, winter forecasts. Actually uh, this uh, forecast was from tw uh, the winter of 2010 and 11 where warmer temperatures were uh, um, forecast for uh, for that year um, in stark contrast to the uh, cold and snowy winter of 2013-2014. And the other um, uh, resource that the U U.S. Department of Agriculture uh, produces is a hardiness zone map and hardiness zones are based on the minimum or the coldest temperatures and are uh, uh, broken down into zones based on uh, 10 degree gradients in temperature. Uh, the last update to the plant hardiness zone map was in 2012 and that uh, has moved with uh, what many people would agree is a clear trend in global warming. These uh, zones have been moved um, northward in across the United States. So um, the, in order to germinate, seeds have to uh, break uh, the condition that's been built into them called dormancy. Um, so while they're going through that period, uh, they're called quiescent, uh, where the seeds are viable but dormant, waiting for the right conditions to trigger dormancy. And dormancy barriers are of several varieties, but the most uh, common and easily described are those that are endogenous or based on conditions within the embryo or exogenous uh, conditions outside the embryo, especially um, because of hard or impervious seed coats which are protecting the seeds from the very environmental conditions that will um, uh, break dormancy. And it's not unusual, in fact, uh, many plants use uh, a combination of strategies, uh, uh, both uh, endogenous and exogenous, and have double or secondary dormancy characteristics. Um, one uh, fascinating uh, material that's been recently discovered in plants is phytochrome. And this is material that uh, basically detects light uh, within the seed and triggers hormone interactions that release dormancy. Um, now even while uh, or dormancy can be, or excuse me, uh, germination can be promoted in crop plants by priming the seeds or in some cases even pre-germinating them and once that's uh, been done then those seeds are returned to a quiescent state for sale. Uh, but later on when they're planted, um, they are um, able to uh, re-germinate later and often re-germinate um, more quickly and more consistently in a seed batch.
So when we met in our lab, uh, the, our first lab, uh, we looked at a um, at, at uh, dormancy and breaking germination for some of our native plants in the Midwest, and we used a resource called the Prairie Moon Nursery Catalog or the Cur Prairie Moon Cultural Guide, and uh, for literally hundreds of plants, that guide prescribes uh, a number of treatments in order to break dormancy. And I've just excerpted and summarized some of them here. Um, but they include uh, everything from no pretreatment necessary other than keeping the seed, uh, storing the seed under conditions in which the uh, seeds will not be damaged or degraded, uh, to a combination of multiple uh, techniques that all need to be um, employed in the correct sequence in order to break dormancy and have those native um, seeds enter into germination. So the um, I uh, in order to illustrate the next couple of points, I um, made up some dummy uh, data for a germination test similar to what you did with your um, moist paper towels. And uh, I created a, a little chart that showed for each day after the seeds were um, placed in the, um, in the paper towel, uh, what the germination percentage was for that day, and then uh, produced uh, uh, the cumulative germination. In other words, the germination, uh, uh, a running total of the germination from the day that the first seed started to germinate until germination stopped, in this case on day 12. And for the 100 seeds that were planted, the first seeds uh, germinated on day 5, the last seeds germinated on day 11, and um, it's going to be up to you to figure out what the germination rate is uh, for that lot of seeds. And then I created some charts and uh, these charts are intended to illustrate some of the points that were uh, made in the textbook. And the first uh, graph is a plot of uh, the germination percentage uh, uh, for each day. And you can see that uh, the highest uh, germination occurred on days uh, uh, 7, 8, and 9, and the uh, less germination um, uh, the further you get away from that central uh, range. And what uh, comes out of that is a normal bell-shaped distribution curve. Uh, the lower chart uh, illustrates um, uh, a sigmoidal curve and in the early days of germination, days four and five, just a few seeds germinated, and then there was a rapid increase on days six, seven, eight, nine. Uh, in which the majority of the seeds germinated. And then again, um, starting on day uh, 10 and 11, uh, the germination rate slowed dramatically and stopped uh, a day later. And here's another uh, question for you to answer as to why a grower might want to know uh, all of this data. Uh, the percentage of uh, germination, uh, the speed, and the uniformity uh, for a particular lot of seeds. How might that enter into the grower's uh, thinking about uh, whether or not to purchase a particular um, lot of seeds? There are a wide variety of techniques for um, using seeds. And certainly the most common one across the world and across uh, the history of human agriculture has been putting your seeds out in the field and growing them and harvesting your crop. Um, but that can be, uh, plants can be uh, field sown or grown from uh, transplants as well as seeds. And uh, turf grass, vegetables, uh, all of our grain crops are primarily grown from uh, field sown uh, seeds or transplants. Uh, there's a variety of issues around um, uh, seed production. Uh, one is uh, preparing the soil to accept and to uh, 
uh, promote uh, maximum germination of the seeds and growth of the uh, of the uh, crop plants that result, uh, aeration of the soil, uh, drainage of the soil are uh, important issues that will affect the uh, eventual um, uh, production of the crop. Uh, crusting of the soil can uh, uh, prevent germination or uh, reduce the amount of uh, water that can penetrate the surface of the soil. And then uh, items such as competition uh, both from the crop plant uh, can be addressed by thinning, competition from weeds by uh, weeding or use of, uh, of uh, pesticides or other, um, other c uh, controls that we talked about under integrated pest management are all, uh, are all issues. And then depending on, again, on the type of crop, uh, how it's harvested, uh, in the case of uh, trees and shrubs, uh, they would need to be dug and perhaps uh, put into bald and burlap uh, uh, packaging for transportation and sale. And then other uh, nursery plants would be uh, harvested and sold as bare roots. Then uh, within that um, there are a wide variety of different ways of actually um, planting the seeds. And uh, one of them, probably the most uh, common now around the world for uh, commodity plants, is using a seed drill pulled behind a tractor to uh, establish the spacing of the rows and the density, that is the distance between uh, seeds that are planted in the rows. Uh, but the seed drills that we have today are based on uh, uh, a, a, an invention by Jethro Tull um, an Englishman back in 1752 and since Jethro Tull happens to be one of my favorite bands from the 70s I thought I'd just put his little uh, uh, drawing of his original seed drill um, into this lecture. So um, other alternative uh, seed production systems including include um, uh, germinating seeds and producing seedlings, bedding plants and vegetables in greenhouses. Uh, greenhouses are critical for extending the growing season, especially in colder, uh, less hospitable climates. And uh, seed trays uh, such as are shown here in the photograph are used for plug production. Um, they make uh, young plants easy to ship, transport and transplant and uh, there are uh, specialty plug producers uh, that grow plugs in very automated uh, situations in vast greenhouses that take up acres and acres of space. So this little plug tray has uh, 200 cells in it, 200 seedlings growing, and uh, uh, this plug tray could go into a shipping box less than one foot by two foot and and uh, um, produce um, vast numbers of plants for for sale or for eventual harvest. Another seed production system is uh, nursery grown and nurseries again can either take uh, and or produce transplants, uh, trees, perennials and other uh, ornamental or horticultural plants. Some of the issues that come up especially with woody plants is getting the correct spacing, um, uh, setting up and, and uh, supervising uh, irrigation systems, uh, displaying the finished plants for, sales, for sale, and uh, uh, deciding whether to go uh, with uh, uh, containers in the nursery, uh, or having to transplant the uh, uh, the product into containers prior to sale. Some issues come up with uh, care of seedlings, uh, obviously watering, maintaining the correct temperature, uh, light conditions, um, moisture, relative humidity, wind, uh, exposure to gases, uh, especially carbon dioxide. 
are all uh, part of uh, managing a greenhouse. But a particular problem uh, that affects seedlings is this uh, damping off. And damping off uh, is a fungal disease um, that is caused by um, several different classes or families of uh, fungi and they can be um, extremely uh, uh, toxic and, and lethal to seedlings in a very short period of time. So combination of vigilance uh, over the plants and maintaining uh, hygienic conditions and preventing uh, overwatering, especially when uh, plants are in the early stages of uh, seedling or uh, root development that um, um, damping off is uh, such a hazard. Now, damping off and hardening off are two different things. Hardening off is uh, preparing the seedlings uh, for transplant uh, outdoors or into their final place. And that involves uh, gradually exposing the seedlings to conditions of temperature, sunlight, uh, wind that they will have to experience outside of the protected uh, confines of the greenhouse. And hardening off is an essential um, procedure that needs to be provided before plants are sold to end users, especially in, in spring. Uh, if plants aren't hardened off and they're uh, put into the soil in May, um, the first day of